Hey, what's up guys, John here. Real estate has been an incredible inflation hedge and holding property over the long term has made many people extremely wealthy. Now, many smart investors today believe that what will happen in the future will be reminiscent of 2008 where rentals stayed strong and due to inflation, they would even increase in most scenarios. So most people are stockpiling capital into multifamily properties. However, I'm in a different boat on this. I personally believe that rentals will fall and fall in a very big way for a variety of reasons that most people are not aware of. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly why I am shorting the housing market and why I believe that most people that are betting into the market are going to make a grave, grave mistake. So please smash that like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share this content to educate people on the truth about what's really going on. So please smash that like button, let's begin. Now let's say that you went out and purchased a million dollar property today. Let's say you have $300,000 in the bank that you just wanna get rid of because you know inflation is eating away at your purchasing power. So you go out there and you buy a million dollar property. You put 30% down and at that point, the gross income is $92,660 per year across 10 units. So the operating expense is roughly 30% and the vacancy rate is 7.5%. That's what the approximate vacancy rate is for this example. Annual net income is 59,990. Annual net income is $59,997, right? So when we look at how this breaks down, the mortgage cost, if you were to take out a mortgage, you have seven hundred thousand dollars debt. You put three hundred down, right? Loan origination fee one percent, interest rate four and a half percent, amortized over thirty years, and a balloon payment due in five years, which most people will just refi. Now, what this would look like is principal and interest payment would be roughly thirty five hundred forty six dollars and eighty cents. Now, the overall annual property tax on traditional, this is just a national median annual property tax, 1.1%. So how does this look? So if the 3546 mortgage plus annual property tax of $925 per month, your monthly debt commitment is $4,471.80, which equates to $53,649 per year. So if right now the annual net income is roughly 60,000. How this equates is you're gonna be left with $6,347.75 in profit, right? But landlords make a lot more money than just this. So they can write off depreciation, uh, they can do cash out refinances. There's a variety of other ways that landlords make money in these properties. And they are a, great, a really great hedge against inflation. But the key is that incomes need to remain stable for these assets to be able to hold themselves up. And this is where I see the big problems. So a fully rented with no major expenses, landlord with profit, roughly $634 per year on each apartment, which is about $52.89 per month per unit, right? So each month that landlord would make roughly $53 a month if nothing changes. But there's so many things that are changing right now that all these landlords aren't aware of that are gonna make these properties run to the negative in a huge way where I believe these landlords are gonna have to dump their property. So right now, what we're seeing is incomes are remaining relatively stable. They're not increasing with inflation. And I believe that people are gonna feed themselves before they're gonna feed their landlord. Now, CNN, they put out this article, global food prices rose for the 12th month in a row in May up nearly 40% per year or year over year, according to the United Nations Food Price Index. Last month was also the sharpest monthly rise in average food prices in over a decade of 4.8%. So you're gonna have rising food prices. Now we have this coupled with the great resignation. If you haven't heard about this, we've had roughly four and a half million people leave their jobs inside one month. And a lot of people now are looking for jobs that are gonna offer sign-on bonuses, health insurance, benefits. They're looking, at big corporations to fill that void because small business simply doesn't have the deep pockets and the ability to provide that comfort. So we're gonna have more people leaving their jobs and more people leaving their apartments, which is gonna to equate to more vacancies for landlords. And if there's more vacancies for landlords, it's rising cost for these landlords because they'd have no income coming in during that period. Then what we're looking at 
is rising cost of home insurance, which is skyrocketing right now. The cost of insurance on a home is on the rise, forcing Americans to make tough decisions about whether to cut back on coverage or make big changes to save their wallets. Now, if they cut back on coverage and one of these landlords has a problem and they can't lean back on insurance to fill that problem, they're going to have to pay even more money to fix their properties because materials are skyrocketing. All goods are skyrocketing simply because of the supply chain problems that we're having right now that look like they're only going to continue more and more down the road, which is going to equate to bigger financial commitments for landlords to fill that void. The nationwide annual premium for homeowners is $13.98 today, estimated by the trade group insurance. The group says that from 2017 to 2020, premiums were up 11.4% on average. That is higher than the nation's 7.9% inflation rate during those years. But what we're also seeing now is we're seeing what FEMA did, the FEMA 2.0 rating that came out. And what this is doing is reassessing nearly all properties in America and it's making it more expensive to get this insurance. So we're gonna have rising insurance costs and gas is increasing. I believe people that are renting apartments, they're taking into consideration what they can actually afford when they're renting. So before, even in expensive markets like LA and New York and San Francisco, people would be spending 50% of gross income on rent. However, that was before rising food costs. That's before what's happening right now with gas and what I believe is going to be more and more unemployment throughout America with small business. So explain the sharp jump in gas prices and why you should get used to shelling out an extra $600 per year, which is an extra 50 bucks a month, which is like filling up the tank one time last year, every single month. So that's, you know, almost a double. It's almost a double in gas prices for everyday Americans. Then what we're looking at too, is utilities. Utilities are going up in a big way. Houston Chronicle, your gasoline, natural gas, and electric bills are going up. Colorado Springs, Colorado Gas, utilities are expected to spike this winter. Um, consume, let's look at this. The natural gas bill might be going up 35% this winter. So utilities are going to be going out. So it's going to be a very interesting situation to think that it's going to be reminiscent of 2008, where 2008, we had a housing crash, definitely. We had unemployment rates around 10%, definitely. Did we have Biden's new mandate? which is going to impact and what I believe is going to bring unemployment rates to roughly 20 to 25%, maybe more as all companies with a hundred or more employees have to issue a mandate for all their employees to comply with what Biden requests. Now this also is going to equate to even more job turnover. So I believe we're going to be stepping into very uncharted territories and putting a six cap on a million dollar property acquisition right now, giving a buffer of roughly $600 per year per unit is a very risky situation when we're stepping into all this uncertainty and we have no sight of getting out of this anytime soon. I actually believe that what's gonna happen is when we step into this correction or really of a collapse or a massive crash is it's gonna be harder to get bank financing and so people are gonna have a harder time leaning on additional capital to hold themselves above water. Now that's gonna be a big problem, but it's gonna be a big, big opportunity for people that have capital and liquidity. Now I believe the people that have capital and liquidity are gonna be able to go out there and purchase these properties for pennies on the dollar. But the big question I ask myself is how low can rents go? How bad will this inflation problem prove to be? How expensive will meat and daily produce cost? How high is insurance gonna to continue to go? Where does this end? Because right now, what I believe we're all doing is we're speculating based on what we've learned in the past, saying that is where things are likely going to go. But every week, every month, every day, we're hearing of some real unique and crazy situation that could impact us all. What do you think about all of this, everything that's happening right now? Do you think that rents are going to collapse? Do you think that rents are gonna drop? Because even if rents dropped, let's say by 15% or 20%, which is not a huge number. It's not a huge number. Rents have increased in a lot of markets 20% in the last year. So for them just to retract to where they were, now if rents collapse by 20%, landlords that have buildings where they have a 6% cap rate, that would mean that they're losing 14% per month. 
now or per year. So how would this how would this really break down? This would equate to a situation of survival of the fittest. Who can hold on to the properties the longest? Who can hold the biggest losses? Now I believe that the smart investors are going to go out there buying up these problems. Drop your comments below as to what you think about all this. Smash that like button, subscribe here. Consider subbing on my personal channel. I'll leave a link pinned down below in the top comment. See you guys next video. YouTube success blueprint. To learn more about growing your YouTube channel and creating passive income as a YouTuber, register for my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video.